Good morning and welcome to Now Church. We're so excited that you chose to join us on today. I am Pastor Crystal and guess what? It's Mother's Day. Yes, that's right. It is Mother's Day Sunday and I'm honored that you chose today to worship with us. You know what? It's going to be a phenomenal day. I hope you're ready. I hope you've rested well last night. And so, you know, before we get started, I simply want to encourage you and let you know that God has not forgotten about you, that this is going to to be a awesome week for you. I declare and decree that your best days are now. I declare and decree that greatness inside of you and as you speak and as you walk, new things will develop all because you're creative like that. You know, when God created us women, he had something great in mind for us. And it's up to us to really pull it out of ourselves and show people what we're really made of. So I invite you to come go to worship with me. Are you ready? Are you sure you're ready? Okay, well, come on. We're going to go inside and get ready for praise and worship. So I'll see you soon. Happy Mother's Day to you. Guess what, guys? It's Mother's Day. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Good morning, everybody. Just want to say thank God for bringing us here today. And I just got to say, it feels like heaven on earth every time I wake up. Come on. Hey, how can we explain it? so amazing since we've been born again everything about us will never be the same the world is looking different we all can feel the change cause we are we are we are the believers
met Life is so much better Do you believe it? Come on and say it Come on Hey, say it Ever since I met Life, life is so much better, better. Oh Lord, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. God, we lift our hands in this place of worship as we honor you, oh God, for creating all the mothers of the world to give life for such a time as this. God, you are great, greatly to be praised. Come on. So we lift our hands and give you a hallelujah chant. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The same yesterday, today, and forever. And the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'll pray, I'll pray your name. Your name. I'll pray, I'll pray your name. Your name. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same yesterday, today, and forever. I'll pray, I'll pray your name. Your name, I'll praise, I'll praise your name. Your name. Hallelujah. 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 Holy, holy, you are worthy. You are worthy of my praise. Of my praise.
Yes, God. You're so worthy, God. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for us. Thank you, Almighty God. As we enter into worship, we lift our hands and open our hearts so that you can meet us right where we are. Come on, wherever you are, raise your hands. Almighty God, we need you right now. Reveal your glory and pour your spirit out. Almighty
Thank you. We want more of your spirit, more of your love and your mercy and healing. We want more of your presence. Come on, carry us. More of your spirit. Are y'all feeling the presence right more now? More of your love and your mercy and healing. We want more of your presence, more of your spirit, more. God is desiring more and more to know you. Come we on. We want more of your presence. More, more of your spirit. More of your love and your mercy. One more time. We want more of your presence. More of your spirit. More of your love and your mercy. to try to reset and put God back into our house and with unity. So we've been eating dinner more together and watching TV together. Then on Sundays, we come together in our living room to have virtual church. What about you guys? What's reset for you guys? Well, for me, reset is like being adjustable to the kind of situation we are in. Okay. Yeah, and I, my reset is in a burden. Okay, all right. And what about you? What's your reset? Um, yeah. Getting used to the new routine that we have. Okay. And what about you? Um, my reset is like like getting to like see the whole family together. We watch up together. We play together. Okay. Okay. Now, what about you, babe? What about unity? What are we doing for unity to be together? Um, we're just having a great time, laughing a lot together, spending time, hanging out. Um, you know, really, really focusing on um, making sure that we still get our work done and being productive, as well as you know, incorporating God into our daily, you know, our daily, our daily vibe here in the house. All right. Well, that's what we're doing here in the English household. So we love you guys, and we are the church. We are the, the now church. church. Yes. So love you we all. Are the now church. Bye. 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 Bye.
All right. Hello now, church. I want to say, hey, happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers out there. I want you to stay tuned because guess what? We have a special segment. I know that we normally have tithes and offering at the end, but I want to give us an opportunity to give right now. I promise you that you want to stick around for a special segment that we have just for you on this Mother's Day. So as we are preparing our tithes and offering, it is our opportunity to sow back into the kingdom. I want to take our time to say I really appreciate those of you all that have been faithful during the time of COVID-19. You have been consistently sowing. Some of you all and so many of you all have been sowing your gift on recurring during the app. I want to encourage you to download the app so that you can give there much more easier than before. So as we are preparing our giving, I want us to prepare our giving. We have several ways to give. You all, as we are going through this process, the giving slide should be up. The first two ways that we encourage you to give is definitely by our website, by going to nowchurch.me, and you can go to the donate button and you can see all of of the ways of giving there the second way is definitely one of the most effective ways and that's through our app or through our text to give and you can simply text 77977 and in the message area simply type in now life and as you're giving I want to say thank you in advance I bless your families thank you all for allowing us to continue to bring online service to you all I hope that you all have been enjoying our online service and I want to make sure that you all understand that we would never take you for granted thank you all for giving of your tithes and offering because we still have things that we have to take care of in reference to our building and making sure that we maintain things just for you until you come back into this place so while you are gathering your giving I want you to stand to your feet with your family so we can get ready to say our confession I'm going to be quiet for maybe the next 10 or 15 seconds as you prepare your giving and then I promise you we have something special that you want to stick around for in a few moments one two three let's go as we give of our tithes and offering. We are declaring into our lives, favor wherever I go, uncommon riches, raises, bonuses and benefits, created jobs, prosperity, sales and commission, money owed to me, checks in the mail, finding money, interest and income, bills paid off, debts demolished, land given to me, gifts and surprises, estates and inheritance, royalties received. May this be done and established through his covenant with us. It is our culture to live in abundance when right now in Jesus name. Father, I thank you for blessing the giving those that have been faithful in this moment. I thank you that though this seed is leaving their hand, it will never ever leave their lives. It will go forth and grow and do exactly what it was called to do in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
how has my mother helped us through this whole pandemic? Um, as far as Dr. C goes, she has helped us in so many ways. Um, I just want to say thank you. She has taught me to forgiveness. People deserve second chances and that doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be in your lives. Um, but to always show love, always. Um, so Dr. C, I just want to say that I love you and thank you for everything. And happy Mother's Day to all you beautiful ladies. Hey everybody, having a mother during these um, trying times or having a mother-like figure uh, is very important because everybody needs to have a, um, a sense of security. And I talk to my mom often every day, she's in Louisiana to make sure she's getting to the store during um, senior citizen time and just to make sure that her well-being is good. So I talk to her often to make sure she's well. Um, my spiritual mother is closer than my mom, so I talk to her often, she checks on me, and it's just good to have somebody who you can confide in, give you biblical uh, advice, talk you off the ledge, and just be a listening ear and someone to have compassion for you um, during these times. So, uh, happy Mother's Day to my mom, Elizabeth Claiborne, and to my spiritual mother, Doxy. Thank you. Um, the importance for me to have a mother in my life is honestly more than just being a nurturer, but also being my soundboard when I need them, and also, you know, just checking in and making sure I'm aligned to where I'm supposed to be. As my mom growing up, she was always the person to tell you what it was, and she didn't really care how you took it. She was going to say what she needed to say, and she'll say it with a smile. And um, I think that that was always one of my biggest things that I hated but loved about my mother because I would find honesty. And the fact that I've come to a church where I found a spiritual mother who is the exact same is crazy, but I love it because Doxy has always been the type of person that just put me in my place even when I don't want to. She know I'm the first one to run. I'm like, nah, I'm good, love. But the fact that she knows what I need for the moment that I'm in, I really do truly appreciate her for that. And I have nothing but pure love for her. Hello now church, thank you all for joining us on this wonderful, wonderful Mother's Day. And as you all can see, we wanted to welcome you all to the cave. Normally I meet with my men and we talk about things that men normally talk about and we don't allow them to leave the cave. But in this moment, we want to welcome you to the cave. And in the cave, normally what happens in the cave, most of you all understand athletes or what happens in the locker room. We generally talk about ladies or we generally talk about things that take place outside the locker room, but it's only maintained inside the locker room and it should never leave normally. But in this case, we're gonna allow you to come into the cave or into the locker room and we're gonna talk about the women. And by the way, we wanna say happy Mother's Day to all of the wonderful mothers that are out there. We wanna say that this is a day that we wanna honor you, especially from the men of Now Church. And we just wanna say that, hey, you are worth more than you ever knew to all of us because we are so appreciative of what you're gonna do. So during today, my name is Dr. A. Adrian Singleton, I happen to be the pastor of Now Church, and I brought along with me some wonderful men. And before we get started, I want to introduce some of the men here with me. So I'm going to start to the right. I'm going to allow them to introduce themselves, and they're going to say Happy Mother's Day to their mother, and then we're going to follow the protocol, and we're going to get right into what is a woman's worth and the legacy of a woman from our perspective. This year, we're doing something completely different. Normally, you see the women teach on Mother's Day, and normally you see the fathers teach on Father's Day, but we we wanted to switch it up to be a little bit more creative to allow you to hear the perspective of a woman from a man's mindset. So as I go into the introduction, after the introduction, we're going to go directly into our session for today. So I start off with MJ. Hello, my name is Marquette Singleton. Happy Mother's Day to Crystal Singleton. She is my mother and my spiritual mother. I love you very, very much. Thank you. 
Also, too, while I'm here, I want to say Happy Mother's Day to Linda Jackson. You are so great to me. I love you, Mom. Thank you for birthing me. I know I am your favorite of all of your sons, but I want to say, and your sons and your daughter, but I want to say Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for birthing me. And I also want to give out a special Mother's Day to my awesome wife, Pastor Crystal Singleton of Now Church, and also to my spiritual mother, Pastor Linnell Williams, out there in Omaha, Nebraska, the AWC. So Happy Mother's Day to you all, and I'm going to keep on passing it on to Mr. Destin. My name is Dustin Bourgeois, and I want to say a big, big happy Mother's Day to my mom, Darlene Bourgeois. I love you so much, and also a happy Mother's Day to the wonderful and great Crystal Singleton, my spiritual mother as well. Absolutely. And now we have Mr. Mike Lewis with us today as well. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Mike Lewis. I want to say happy Mother's Day to my phenomenal mother, Barbara Lewis. Um, in addition to my mother, Barbara Lewis, I want to say happy Mother's Day to Barbara Chambers as well. And to my lovely, lovely wife, Jaquel Lewis, who I affectionately call my queen. Happy <laughs> Mother's Day to each and every one of you. I love you, and uh, I appreciate you more than words could ever, ever, ever suffice. Absolutely, I love it. So before we get started, I want us to, I want us to loosen up a little bit because we, you know, in the man cave we loosen up, and we we generally give we generally give a few rules about what happens in the man cave. So in the cave. We, we own all the rules. We don't get a chance to rule everything else in the house. But in the cave, I don't care if it's a corner, if it's a bathroom, we get a chance to choose the rules and the laws and who controls the remote control in the cave. So on this part, we'll welcome, welcome you all into the cave. And we want you to say you have a little control, but we want to give the overall perspective of a woman's worth. So today's session, we're going to kick this thing off. I want to jump into the worth of a woman from my perspective. And women today, they go through so much. They have to go through a lot of burden for one, birthing us into the earth, right? Even though I know in the beginning God created man, but after God created man, the women had to weigh the burden of having given birth to all of us. I don't think I want that pain, right? I don't think I ever want to deal with that pain. And we all know this, women are so strong, and I can attest to this myself. I've seen my wife and my mom go through so much pain, and they're still up working cleaning, cooking, going to work, taking care of business, but I can get that same pain and I'm going to take me a BC and a Coke or whatever I have. I can't do anything else. And I don't want to do any honey dudes. We lay in the bed, we're going to pout, but we cannot take pain. I'm just like, if I had to have children, just knock me out and put me to sleep and wake up. Ah. <laughs> but we want to say that you all are so, so worthy, but I want to talk about the worth of a woman. I want you to understand that you are far more valuable than what the world and the society puts in place today. Y'all remember the song James Brown say? Y'all remember that song? Let me see if you can test your age. What's that song, James Brown song? This is a man's world. There you go. Come it is a with. man's world. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I know that our women, they are born into a world that was really created for men to rule. But us understanding the kingdom, we know that our responsibility is to ignite the king out of the woman. If we can ever ignite the king out of the woman and ignite the king out of our daughters, we want them to know that they are just as valuable as we are. We are to walk on this earth with partnership, but there are some great things I want to talk about because I want them to believe that, women, you don't have to be intimidated by men. You don't have to be intimidated by who we are. I love to see women have the opportunity in the work arena, in the business arena, be just successful as we are. They had to fight for so many things, but our job and our responsibility, especially us as fathers and husbands and, and, and brothers and, and brothers to other women, we want to make sure that we allow them to understand that you are valuable and your value is much more than what the world portrays it to be. So I want to go to uh, 1 Timothy 5 through 7. I'm, I'm going to read. I'm going to be quiet because at this point, we're going to give you all a chance to talk about your topics. But before I go, before I take off on mine, I want you all to give a brief introduction of what you all will be talking about today before I jump into mine. Because I'm going to teach on my piece, maybe five minutes, and then I'm going to allow you all to teach on your piece too as well. Okay? So MJ, what's your piece for today? So my piece uh, for today, hello, Mark West Singleton again, just in case anybody know, is uh, the value of choosing and identifying the right woman to marry and why is the one you choose more valuable than the others? Um, now this topic is specifically for me because I am engaged, uh, getting ready to be married. Amen. Amen. And um, it's, I'm basically just going to give you a couple steps of uh, knowing um, 
what you need to understand when you know you have the right one or what to look for um now i'm not gonna get too far in my de teaching but um there are going to be key things that are going to make you realize okay i've been doing this wrong or okay i've been trying to go for this but in reality i need to chill out and wait for a bit very good very good okay so destin let's talk about your piece all right so what i'm going to be teaching about today is just the value of the single mother so uh most of my life my mom was a single mother and i'll be touching on the topics of what the values that she's instilled in me and how it was like and what she means to me okay very good mr mike and uh what i'm going to be sharing this morning is really understanding the value of marrying uh the right woman for the purpose of of really forging a blended family um i don't want to go deep into it just yet but uh my wife and i we have a blended family of eight children wow. and uh yeah i said the same thing wow <laughs> but uh but not wow in the bad way but no, wow in that's, bad that's way. a powerful family not in man. a bad way like god trust me enough to give me eight but no but uh so we're going to be talking about that and why it's so important to choose the right wife the right woman uh for uh for the purpose of forging your family together i, lo I love that word forging your family together right it's not a force it has to be forged it's a process to forge something together okay so very good so let's jump into this and the scriptures are gonna the scripture will pop up on the screen that precious memory triggers another your honest faith hold on check this out let me get to what I want to get to one second it says this that precious memory triggers another your honest faith and what a rich faith it is handed down from your grandmother Lois to your mother Eunice and now to you and the special gift of ministry you received when I lay hands on you and prayed check this out keep that ablaze God doesn't want us to be shy with his gifts but but bold and loving and sensible. So what this was, this is when Paul was talking to Timothy, which was a mentee of his. Paul was telling Timothy, or he was, he was being very aware of Timothy's heritage. And we're talking about legacy, the worth of a woman, right? He was very aware why Timothy had thought this way. But I want to point out three things that Paul mentioned to Timothy in reference to his worth from his grandmother. And so notice this, the word also teaches us about the older women should pass down things to the younger women. And I think that there is a gap that in the world that we see today, that women forget, forgot about the principles of them passing down legacy to young women. Not our church, but we need to make sure that more women understand their worth so that they can understand what they have needs to be passed down. So check this out. So Paul mentioned three important things in this. He said that precious memory triggers another. Your honest faith and what a rich faith it is handed down from your grandmother, right? And then your grandmother passed it down to your mother. So I think about the legacy of my mom and my grandmother and what was passed down to them my grandmother prophesied that I would be a pastor and I was like nope you lying <laughs> never a day right and then I think about the legacy of my, my wife her mother her grandmother and her great grandmother she had a chance to see like three generations right and so that was precious to be able to understand a legacy so three keys that Paul mentioned to Timothy that's worth discussing for a moment he mentioned honest faith he mentioned rich faith. What's the difference? Then the last thing he said, special gift. So he said, honest faith, rich faith, and then a special gift. So as I think about this, and I'm going to pass the mic, I'm going to pass it to you so you can talk about your part. When I think about the overall worth of a woman, women go through a whole lot. But we want to make sure that we say that today we're so thankful that you understand and that we make sure that other men understand the balance of what you go through and the things you all do. And sometimes we can take it for granted, right? Like when I first got married to my wife, she wanted to stay at home. And I used to be like, man, you know what? You at home with all the kids and you you doing all this. I'm the one working until I had to stay at home with my kids. I said, you can, I can gladly give you your job back. It's easier for me to go out into the world and do something. So that's the value. And I remember seeing my mom, she used to work, she still does now from 12 hours a day. And coming home at nighttime, working night shift, coming home to take care of us, I still can remember these moments. And I want to say I remember and I'm thankful that she made the sacrifice because because of the sacrifice she made and what my wife made, we have great kids today. And I have, am a great husband to my wife because of that sacrifice. So honest faith to me is this. Honest faith is internal. His grandmother planted 
internal faith inside of him. But rich faith is external. That means that my faith, it boils over or it resonates or it protrudes out onto somebody else and it becomes rich. Almost like somebody cooks a cake. They honest within their cake, but the richness of their cake is expressed by somebody else tasting their cake. The same exact thing happens in this scripture here. He said you have rich faith. You have honest faith. And then the special gift. Sometimes us as fathers, we drive the gift, but the mother nurtures the gift. I remember pushing him real hard in football. I'm like, you good, you good. Even my daughter, you can sing, you can sing. And I get mad at the fact that they are not walking in their full potential. And I get upset. And he might be like, Dad, he might, he might get frustrated. But then my wife can come along and massage him and nurture the same gift that I was trying to force out because she is a women or a natural nurturers. Even my mom, I used to get mad. But then she was the one that can sit me down and say, come on, child, let me sit down. Fix you something to eat. God is good. God going to love you. And he allowed me to, and she allowed me to believe in myself for more than my dad. My dad pushed me. My mom, mur- my mom nurtured my gift. Does that make sense? Good. And that's the purpose and the worth of having great women in our lives. And so I'm going to pass it on to you. I'm going to let you have your part. And then we're going to dialogue behind everything you say. I hope you all are enjoying this today. Okay. So uh, we're going to start with the first one, which is the value of choosing and identifying the right woman to marry. Now, I know a lot of people who are single or they're searching for the right one to marry. And I know a lot of women are searching. The thing is, there's one scripture that stands out to me the most. And I'm all for equality and all that stuff. But in Proverbs 18, 22, it says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. You stole my scripture. Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the the reason I picked this scripture is is simply because when he says he who finds a wife finds a good thing, this this tells me basically word for word he who finds a wife, he who finds a wife, not she who finds a husband. So if there's some if there's a woman who's trying to find their husband, you're not going to find him or your relationship will not be as blessed just because it's not him who's standing in front of the line being the foundation to find you first. That's good, that's good, that's good. Because in scripture and in Genesis it always talks about how Adam, he first had work before he met Eve. If this man that you're trying to find, if he hasn't found his work yet and you're trying to grab him prematurely and put him in a relationship, you can't get upset that the relationship is not working. So because of that, for instance, the relationship, I'm in, the relationship I'm in with my fiance, when I first met her, I first made sure we connected spiritually. We've been together for three years and I mapped this out specifically. The first year was all spiritual. Now, my fiance, uh, she does. She lives in Chicago. We've been in a long distance relationship. So the great thing about that is we got to understand each other spiritual before we understood each other physically. Because when you meet somebody face to face, you're like, oh, they're attractive. Oh, they're beautiful. You're really not going to understand their spiritual side. So I was very grateful and blessed to understand her spiritually. And we were in a spiritual relationship for a whole year before I actually took the chance to go see her so because i understand her spiritually we understand the same god we believe in understand the same bible and we both understood what we like and what we don't like we understand each other so then now when i go down to see her physically i can see okay what she likes what she eats what makes her upset but it all has to start in a particular order so whenever you're trying to find somebody special for you you need to first get there spiritually you need to understand do y'all connect spiritually do y'all worship the same way do y'all pray the same way because if you're with somebody and then later on after three years now you want to understand them spiritually and you don't like the way they worship you should have figured that out the very beginning but there's two different type of worships some people can worship sitting down. Some people can worship standing up. So if you're standing up worshiping and you see your husband or wife sitting down worshiping, you can't get mad at them because they're worshiping. You should have learned that from the very beginning. <laughs> Everybody has a, dis- a different worship, and you need to understand that. So um, another thing is when the, the man understands who you are, they're going to do whatever they can to make sure you are happy and you have what you need. Think about it like this. Everybody says there's that one person special for you. They say God has one person special for me. Now, you're basically saying out of 5.6 billion people, God has made one person for you. The reason I say that is not true is because if that relationship does not work out, you can blame God saying, why did you give me this man? (laughs) It doesn't work like that. So it has to come to a point that 
when you meet somebody, you have to see them, at, man or woman, you have to see them as a jewel, a very special jewel that you see a gift that they have inside you that you're willing to grow with in the future. That's what you have to see. So let me ask you a question. You stated it good. So in, in reference to, I'm sorry. So let me, okay, so, um, all right. All right, here we go. So in reference to finding the worth in a woman, right? How did you identify? So you stated it spiritually. So spiritually was the first jewel that you recognized in the worth of her? So the first thing that I noticed in her that made me want to continue talking to her is her self-worth. Okay. Now, um, in the past, there was times where it's very hard to find, well, I wouldn't say it's very hard, but it's, it's very rare to find a woman whose self-worth is extremely high. Now, what attracted me to that is because you don't always have to tell her, you know, you're beautiful. You don't always have to keep uplifting her because if you're, keep, if you're continuing to keep uplift her, there's nothing else you can do to grow her from within. So if you're always trying to call her beautiful, always giving her positive, like, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, don't worry about what other people are saying. If you're too busy worried about that, then you're no longer growing. You're still at that neutral standpoint and y'all can't move on from that, that area. Okay. Makes yeah. sense. Makes sense. Very good. You still have more or we can move on? Yeah, no, 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 I still have more. Okay, so you have two minutes left. <laughs> okay, so the next one is why is the one you choose more valuable than the others? And that goes back to that special jewel. I know for a fact that when we grew for three years, we built so much on each other and that that's my special jewel. There is no other female that can compare to her. So once, once you, for instance, think about pottery. Once you're working on a sculpture, for a very long time, for months, or you're drawing a picture, or you're working on a business. Once you grow that business for years and years to come, there is nobody that can touch that business because you put work into it. Now, people say, you know, love at first sight. There's no, there's no such thing as a perfect relationship. It gets perfect from working toward it, just like art. There's no perfect art until you work for it. It gets perfect after putting years into it or investing into it or investing into a business. It gets perfect because you put work into it. So in order to make your relationship perfect or to get close to it, you have to work to it. There might be times you argue. There might be times you fight. But at the end of the day, as long as you give your relationship to God, y'all know y'all coming right back to this relationship to talk about it because we gave our relationship to God and we not going to embarrass him because of the stupid argument we had. Very good. That's good. Anybody want to collaborate on that? That's good. Uh, oh, my goodness. That's all right, I mean, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my notes back in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's, I mean, I think everything that, that, that you're saying is so key. And, and everything that you shared, you know, I'm, I'm locating myself during that time. You know, um, because again, coming from a uh, previous marriage, um, it was tough. It was tough because looking back at it now, I can say that I was not the person that was necessary in order to be the husband that my wife now needs to have, right? But now I wanna flip it and, and, and say, I don't think I was the person that was worthy of such a woman that had the worth that my wife has. You gotta go. You gotta go deep into that. You have to go a little bit deeper. <laughs> say that one more time. So, so, so here, here's, here's what I mean. The Bible says that a woman is worth far more than rubies, mm -hmm. right? In the past, I didn't understand the value of precious metals and, and jewels, right? And so I was selfish in the beginning. I was selfish. So when I found my wife now, I was developing myself, building myself up so I could, I could so I was now qualified to have the wife that I now have. I wasn't worthy of a woman of her caliber. So I had to develop myself in order to be qualified for a woman with so much worth. Mm. And So let me ask you this. How did you, how did you identify her worth? Ooh. Oh. 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 <laughs> so, we, you know, it, this, this is funny because we laugh and joke about it a lot now. And one of the things that stood out to me about my wife was that she, she did not carry herself the way that other females did in my generation. And that was extremely attractive to me because it goes to what you were saying. She understood her worth. She had, she, her self-esteem was just like, it was on a whole nother level. And that was attractive to me. But what it did was it inspired me to want to get to know who this woman was behind such confidence. Gotcha. 
right? And so, so she wasn't no pushover. She wasn't no pushover <laughs> by a long shot. You know, uh, she wouldn't. She wouldn't. <laughs> And this is not a hit on anybody, but one of the, we laugh and joke about it. But she never, I never saw her in public with pajama pants <laughs> or hair rollers, right? Or hair, I never saw. I'm it. sorry if you do. Never, no, this is not a hit. But if that's was, your thing. <laughs> but this was a thing that that uh, that really stood out to me, and I said, "This is a woman that understands what she brings to the world," and that was extremely attractive to me. So when you said that. Right. It's like one of the things that ladies, what what you have to understand is your worth is so you can't describe it. You can't describe it when you understand what you bring to the table, when you understand what you bring to this earth. Uh, again, you know, jokingly, we said, you know, James Brown said this is a man's world. But the other part of that said it wouldn't be nothing without a woman or a girl. And that is so true, because where would we be if we did not have our Women in our lives, and just I'm not. When I say fight, women, let me clarify. Just fighting all the time. <laughs> <laughs> let me clarify, okay? I'm not saying that we need to have a whole bunch of women. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> but but it is is critical for us as men to understand the value mm -hmm. of a woman. I think that's good. And to piggyback off that, um, um, me and my fiance have been together for three years, and we've been waiting to marriage because she is a virgin. Now I am not a virgin. When we first started talking, this is what made me really, really want to invest into a relationship because, you know, I ask questions. I love asking questions to understand somebody. And when she told me she was a virgin, of course I was skeptical because you know everybody's you know born to born again. Ain't no, virgins. Ain't no more virgins in the world, <laughs> right? Okay. So then when I asked her, um, and the answer she gave me is because me, I'm a person of 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 culture, of my belief. And I'm a, potion, a person of reality too. So when she told me she was a virgin, I was like, okay, I want the honest answer. Why are you a virgin? Because there are some people who are virgins by default. Their parents never let them go outside. So that, that don't count. But she was in relationships prior before me. So I was like, okay, why are you a virgin? And the words she said, and which made me, it, it intrigued my mind. She said, the reason I'm a virgin is because I know my self worth and there's nobody who's worthy enough to take it. Ooh. I said, oh, let me go ahead and wipe her up real quick. That's a, that's a mic drop moment right here. Don't don't drop that mic. <laughs> I said, wow, like, this is somebody I need to talk. I, wow. It made me want to invest to figure out she understands her, her self-worth so much it made her more attractive to that's me. That's good. Sure. And I haven't even seen her yet. So then that's when we started connecting spiritually because it's like, you already there mentally. Not a lot of women are there mentally, especially from the background I come from with my family. I have a high mentality. So if you can't hang with me up here, just talking to her for five minutes, it made me realize she was already there with me. And it's, I don't have to train her with my culture because she already understands it. She was living in a kingdom culture without knowing the word or knowing the belief or what it was. She was just living it, just naturally. And I was like, okay, God, I see, I see what you, this is this walking across the garden, okay? I see what you're doing. Wow. Very good, okay, excellent. All right, so while you were talking, let's go ahead and go into your segment. We'll give you, give you time to jump into yours. Well, uh, again, you know, taking into consideration, you know, we have a blended family. And um, when I think about value, you know, I had to I had to really dig into the 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 definition of value. And, and here's what I have. Value is a person's principles or standards of behavior. One's judgment of what is important in life. Who mm. value is a person's principles or standards of behavior. One's judgment of what is important in life. Mm. So when you when you talk about a woman's value. It's, it's critical to understand that a woman who understands her value understands what's important in her life. And as a father, that was a very, very important thing for me as, as I was as I was, you know, going through that stage of healing from my from my first marriage, because it was it was a stage of healing. And uh, for the two years of, of going through that process of developing and cultivating who God has created me to be, um, when I saw my wife now, and I saw that she understood her value, but she also understood, she had principles and standards that she set for herself. I have two boys from my, from my first marriage, two boys and a, and a daughter. 
And so that was very, very important for me that the, the, the young lady that I brought into their lives was able to live mm. the lifestyle that was conducive to what we believe, like you were saying, the culture. And so uh, that was one thing that really stood out to me. Um, again, talking about her worth, you, you have to understand that a woman adds value to everyone around her. Mm, a woman beautiful. that understands her worth, she adds value to everyone ar around her. Now, this is probably the first time I said it on camera. <laughs> 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 but my wife, it's not the first time, I'm just joking. But my wife makes me so much better mm -hmm. that... You know, I can I can be in denial about it, you know, in private all day long, you know, but she does. She makes me so much better. But not only does she make me better, she make our entire family better. Yep. Yep. Right. She she forces you to think. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She forces you to think. But some, but sometimes because my wife the same is like, wait. But how long did it take for you to really start valuing her work? Because at first, me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a red personality, and I don't really like a lot of people telling me what to do. But then, for a while, my wife would give me valuable information, and I would push back for so long until I started receiving that information, and it began to make me better. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? and I didn't want to go back and say, you know, what you said was pretty good, yeah. right? Because <laughs> I take that and use it in a meeting. I'm like, that really did freaking work. <laughs> but go ahead, go ahead. And no, and 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 you know, that's that's so key because. Because I'm still working on it, <laughs> you know. But no, I've I've learned. I've learned because uh, my wife is full of wisdom, which is another trait of a of a woman that understands her worth. She's full of wisdom, and that just naturally is expressed in anything and everything that she does. So, so when you when you talk about a woman's worth, again, understanding that a woman adds value to everyone around her. The next point is I understood that my wife was a channel of favor. She was a channel. Taking my verse, of man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to go on the verse that MJ stole from us, <laughs> the Bible says that he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor, favor from the Lord. Right now, here was the thing that really drew me to my wife was that I understood that she was a woman of tremendous worth, of tremendous value, and I understood that I already had the favor of God on my life. So when I found my wife, I now understood that I had a double portion of favor because I had the favor that is already on me. That's so good. Right? Man, but now up. the woman of worth is adding to the favor. So now I have a double portion. Yep. So now I have to value <laughs> the yep. gift yep. inside of this tremendous woman. Right? Because if I don't, then I cut my access off. <laughs> but check this out, Mike. So isn't it something else when your wife knows that she yeah, has she, she played with it. So, so yeah. <laughs> so my wife. Did, so, so what Doctor C does is, if we get mad at each other, and I'm going for something, she just look like, mm. Mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I told you. I told, you can't do this without me, right? I'm just like, hold on. We supposed to be praying together. I ain't joining you. And then I'm like, hold on. So in the back of my mind, I got to get this thing right before I go. I'm, before I go to anything else, I know that if if I mess up what we have, God had placed placed that on me mm -hmm. to get it right because I still have to recognize the worth and the value that God has in her, even to get God to answer my prayers. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and you helped me with that just recently, as a matter of fact. I'll send you an invoice. Yeah, please do. <laughs> please do. Babe, pay the invoice. So, <laughs> but you helped me with that. We were having a conversation, and you were saying a, a way to look at how, how we function is when I pour into my wife. That's a seed being sown. So good. That's a seed being sown not only into my wife, but it's a seed that's being sown even into my own life. And so now it's not um, as tedious to, to yeah. be able to, to pour into my wife. Yeah. Right, because again, the, the favor is there. You're <laughs> right? giving us this is the man cave. This is the man cave, but you said we hold the rules. <laughs> so no, I, I want I want I want to piggyback on that. So check this out. Um. My kids, I'm going to put my wife out there, not too much. They say my wife is Paul, right? And I might say the same as I think that she's Paul, but I do that intentionally because I know that every seed I sow into her life, that's favored back into our life. Mm -hmm. Say it again, not just my life, but as I sow into my wife's life, 
Okay, just like for Mother's Day, we went to hook. She say she say the backyard. We hooked to the whole backyard. She say it was our thing. When I try to say it was a Mother's Day gift, now this is our. This is the family gift. I ain't chose no foul flowers, but me investing back into the worthiness of who she is, it reinvests back into our life because what she brings to the table, she make all of us better, right? But it's true. That true statement where people say it's a happy wife, happy life. I think that's real because when you pour into your wife, then what God has given her to nurture, it comes out on all of us and it reshapes all of our lives for the benefit of our lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and that's so key. That is so key because that was, again, you know, forging our families together as a blended oh, family, Lord. that's tough. That's tough. <laughs> right because you have so many different personalities so so many different um uh temperaments and what what was critical for us was to be able to live the example underneath the roof of our home for our children to see that in spite of this can still work mm -hmm. and that was so important for us and that was one of the things that that created the atmosphere for me to value her worth even more because who she was in private was no one different than who she was in public. That's good. So, and I wanted my children to see that, right? So my, I, I knew my children would never see my wife out in public doing something she didn't have no business doing because this was not her lifestyle. This was, this, her standards was, she was, she is extremely, extremely um, adamant about family. Yeah. She loves family, which is another value of mine. I value my family. And so that merger that took place as a result of those, uh, those values was, was really, really important. So her, her private lifestyle aligns with her values and her perception that she has of herself. Mm. The next point is, a woman of worth is an incubator of ideas. Wow. I like that. I'm going to steal that. Go ahead. <laughs> She's an incubator of ideas. Okay. There are so many times when I would have an idea and I just couldn't put the pieces of the puzzle together. Mm -hmm. And I would bring it to my wife and within a day or two, I'll see the whole picture because yep. she'll lay it out in a whole different yep. way. And when I saw that, I said, my goodness, I found a good thing. <laughs> and, I, and I think, too, as well, and I think me and MJ the same exact way with, with, with uh, Pastor C, and your, your segment is coming up next, Destin, um, is that we have to realize the right time to bring things to her, right? And so uh, we had to discover that we can't put the framework together and then bring her the framework because she's going to chop everything down and rebuild it. And that became frustrating at a time. So now what I had to realize is when I go to her with ideas, I go with her and say, okay, the frame is not built. I need to brainstorm. And she, come, she came up with this idea, right? And we was thinking about doing something different. She was like, how about you do this, do this? I said, okay, write it up and send it to me. She wrote it up in like five or 10 minutes and sent me your segment, MJ segment. Like 30 this seconds. Is, like 30 seconds. I was like, I like that. When she said that, I was like, I, I like that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> you know you like that. <laughs> but no, it was like right back there in that seat, man. It was like 30 seconds. She sent it. Boom, boom. And I was like, okay, I got to bring her more things that's not framed because she's a cultivator of ideas. But if I bring the frame, the way she's built, she's going to tell the frame now because her thinking is completely different. And that used to frustrate me because our, I can think about something for morning, noon, night, and I can go up like, no, that's not the way I want to do it. But she like tear the whole thing down and rebuild it back up. So now I had to become comfortable with her doing that and not get frustrated. I just bite my teeth now and just let her go through it. And it ends up being better 100% of the time. You know, you know what's, what, what you just said, it remind me, uh, as a little boy, uh, my brother and I, um, we <laughs> purposely, I would say accident, accidentally, but we did it on purpose. We lit a field on fire. <laughs> now, we didn't expect it to go the way that it went, but the entire field caught on fire. And what we noticed, of course, is when it was all said and done and the field was just scorched, right? It looked like there was no more life in the field. A few months later, we saw green grass begin to pro pop back up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Within a year, that entire field was, I mean, it was, it was gorgeous. Brand new grass. I mean, it was just all new life. And that's how a woman of worth is. 
we can bring an idea to them and it can be just scorched no life in it and we pass it to her and she will she would mold that thing and create something that we never saw multiply it. she will multiply it that's a woman of tremendous worth so my last point my last point okay. <laughs> a woman of worth is a beacon of strength she's a beacon of strength I, I cannot count on my hand how many times I've had those moments even as a man I've had those moments when I just felt weak and I will walk in the house and she can see it and without saying a word she'll just grab me and say it'll be okay and, and, and strength it's like you know how when, when we were younger we played video games and you know you would go and get the little the little heart that you know brings your health back up <laughs> so my wife would have a, a heart on reserve yeah. right and she would she would just bloop, 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 and I'm back <laughs> right and so she's a woman of strength so and all of those things were critical for me those were things that I, I was looking for uh, as I was going to bring a wife to, to, to meet my my children mm -hmm. right and so that was so important for me to understand and so women understand this mm -hmm. that like what MJ said you don't have to go seek your husband out yeah. when you cultivate who it is that God has created you to be because understand it's already in you mm -hmm. it's your responsibility to draw it out however when we meet as man and and and, and woman and when you find that husband, he then will continue to help you cultivate that. But he's only going to come as a result of you understanding what your worth is so from the beginning. Very good. Very good. Very good. Excellent. I love it. Y'all too good, man. We got to do this more often. You, you are pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Destin, your turn. All right. So I'm going to be honest with everybody. My notes. Mm -mm. But the thing is, with everyone talking. I realized my mom taught me three valuable lessons that I could count on my hand right now. Mm -hmm. One is what it really means to invest. Mm -hmm. Not with actual money, but with time. Very good. With love and just nurturing. And believe it or not, my mom was the first person who ever taught me how to worship. Wow. She, beautiful pianist. Like, I wish she would have taught me. <laughs> I, I really did, but the way she flows when she's on a piano I've seen her play for a church. Everybody in the audience, singer stop sing, uh, stop singing. She played and played and played, and like me as a kid, I'm just like, why do I have these goosebumps? Like, why are my hands in the air? That's good. So, and the second thing is, my mom instilled confidence in me, Very and good. she doesn't notice, but. There's one verse that I've gotten that describes her, well, what she told me. She said, for God gave you the spirit of not of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. In 2 second, second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. That's good. And what that means to me is my favorite verse, and I forgot about it. And then two years it resurfaced. And now I'm thinking, just like, I've seen my mom go through so much. As a single parent, it is hard raising two boys, well, three boys and two girls. She was always there for me, no matter if she had work. That's good, man. No matter if she had something else to do. And then the third thing that I, I really, really got to thank her for, she taught me how to be a leader. Mm, that's good. She, the leadership that she has is something on a completely different level. I noticed, like I'm noticing now, I'm just like, wow. She was the first person I ever know to had her own business, teaching piano to kids. And trust me, I've seen the kids beforehand till now, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> She's just, and it's, it's crazy too, because if I had just one more ounce of her leadership, I guarantee you my life would be so much different. And so she did this from a perspective of being a single um, woman, no father so your father was your father present in the house at all no sir he wasn't. at all so how did she close that gap of you not having a father figure when you grew up so even though i know it's tough to close that gap you can never be a man but how does she close that gap 
to branch you to be the man that you are today? So two things. In a way, she had to play both wor both worlds. So little less nurturing and more like pushing me like you can do it go ahead and do it uh don't cry about it she'll give me three seconds to cry and then after that it's like one, get up three. It's a one she didn't even do one mississippi one two three get out and the second thing she would bring me around my uncle okay but oh so that's good so she identified that you needed to have the presence mm -hmm. of a man that's a great woman that's good, mm -hmm. that's good. and the thing everybody's like the one word that's kept coming up, well, two words, is value mm -hmm. and invest. Mm. The value that my mom instilled, well, and single moms that instill in their children is undeniable. When you see people getting drafted into the NBA, thank you, mom. Uh, this is for you, mama. I love you. Do you know how much confidence you have to have to raise a single child, well, a child? Just, not just one by yourself. And I just got to say, well, Darlene, I know you're going to get mad for me calling you by your first name. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> and thank you. And I just, I take this as a blessing because if it wasn't for her, I, I wouldn't be, I mean, I really wouldn't be here. But it's, it's just so amazing the, the strength that she has. Like physical and like mental strength too. Like I said, three seconds to cry. Now if I'm crying, just one, two, three. <clears throat> we good. Suck it up, bro. Yeah. And I'm just... Like, I'm baffled. Like, words can't describe how much she's taught me. That's she's cool. always taught me, like, hey, if somebody call you ugly, that means I'm ugly because you look like me. <laughs> <laughs> and take her. And it's like, hey, then that means she's talking about my mama. And, we, I don't, -uh. and I, I take that in consideration. It's like, people are like, man, you're not that good looking. My mama good looking, so I mean, hey, uh, the apple don't far, far from the tree. You feel me? So, and I just think about that just like, Confidence, confidence-wise, yes, I've grown, but that's she instilled that seed in me. She invested the time to be, hey, Lee, that's what she calls me. You gonna be big one day? Oh, you gonna be an actor? And you know what? You gonna play the piano? You gonna teach me? No, but you gonna play the piano. <laughs> and I play the piano, and I know the reason why she couldn't teach me. She can't teach from. She can't teach the way I want to be taught. Gotcha. And she realized that. She's classically trained. I not. I like to play how I feel. And she notices that. One a couple of days ago, we were uh I heard a song by uh I think it was Stevie Stevie Wonder. And she goes, How'd you hear that? Uh how'd you you got the chorus of that? No. She goes, How you hit how you I heard it. She goes, Huh? I heard it and she looked at me she goes I knew you're gonna be somebody one day and I still believe that to that to this day and the amount of love she's given me throughout all the all the stuff that I've done all the pain that I caused too is just uncanny I and I'm lost for words every time I speak that's good D and I want to say just speak to all of the uh, single ladies unmarried women and you're trying to do this by yourself this is evidence that you can do it. You can make it. Uh, our responsibility in this church is to build strong men so that the future women don't have to face the fact of raising children by themselves. But I take my hat off to you all that have done such a phenomenal job of raising your boys, raising your girls by yourself because it's not an easy job to do. To go to work, to drop your children off, and know that you don't have that second person to go and do that for you. You have to make the same rounds, go back, pick your child up, then go home and help them with homework and fix dinner and get them ready for the next day for, for work and school again. And you have to do this for 18 years as long as you remain single by yourself. So again, any woman out there that's a mother and you are raising your child by yourself, don't feel like you have to go through this alone. You have a church family, you have us, don't go through this alone. But those that have done a phenomenal job, we just wanna say we love you, we thank you, and we definitely say Happy Mother's Day to you because we would always be thankful for you for making a sacrifice, especially developing people like this here today. Don't you think so? Yeah, and we, all the single parent, all mothers out there, I applaud you because I know it's not easy and it show, it's a testament to your strength and we just have to say we love you. Absolutely. Anybody else wanna make remarks towards that? 
Well, I, I mean, my goodness, you know, I, uh, I'm it, to hear you talk about your mom. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, this is Mother's Day, but um, you can you can feel the genuine love that you have for your mom. And and you know, I want to say this: my 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 heart goes out to uh, the families, for example, that um, may not have their mother here with them anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I think about a recent. Uh, situation with my mom who uh, thank God you know God brought her through uh, fighting the uh, coronavirus just yeah. just recently and it was tough it was tough when we would get on the phone with her and we could barely hear her speak that was tough because again I know my brother can can you know say the same thing but my mother again she's a pillar of strength for our family and to hear her at a weak moment in her life was very very painful very painful and to to see her now and to the the ability now the the comfort the peace in knowing that as she was going through this she knew that her husband and her boys had her back that's good man. so the opportunity to be able to pour back into the lives of our mothers um is something that we can't take for granted yep. you said uh, uh a weak moment isn't it funny because when i see my mom when i saw my mom go through a weak moment it not only made her stronger it made me stronger because yeah. i know if she could get through it she passed all the wisdom that she has down to me. Mm-hmm. So I know I could get through it may, maybe even faster. So when I say, when we say weak moments now, it's really just like, oh, ugh, those kind of moments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now I know it's just like, it's just a little, it's like a little speed bump for me. Yeah. And I think too as well, um, and we know that we have several people even in our own house that have lost their loved one, their mom to the coronavirus. And we want to say that, hey, we are walking this journey with you and we are praying for you because we know that this is something inside your heart that can never be replaced. We can never replace mom. And when mom goes through those weak moments, I think it, it does something to us. You know, our mom, it doesn't matter what she say to us. She's our own. My mom, for one, is the only person that can say something to me. I might not let her know at the time, but it stays in my mind all day long until I call her back. My mom has a habit of, if we she get mad at me, I try to call her back, and she won't answer the phone all day. Yeah, I'm like, woman, well, I, I know you see my phone. Why? I'm texting her. I'm texting scriptures at her. You taught me the word. Why are you not replying back? But it's something about when uh, mom is is hurt. It's something about when you see someone lose moms, right? So again, those that have lost moms, hey, we we are walking the journey with you. We bless you. We are sending the peace of God over your life. Those that still have your mother here on earth with you today, man, embrace her. Make this day special to her. Enjoy this day. Don't allow this time to move because we don't know the last time when we'll see our mom. So we want to make sure that we celebrate the moms every single day, okay? Anything else? Go ahead, Destin. Go ahead. Oh, another thing that came to mind too uh, this, will be, this will be my closing my mom told me I can remember this to this day at 5 years old I just got back from school and I had a really bad day and she said you don't have to worry God's got you mm-hmm. and at the time I'm just like okay and she goes remember you're in this world you're not from this world so anything that comes your way, every weapon formed against you shall not prosper. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean it will fo- it won't form. Wow, I mean that's that's so that's so powerful. If if I could, and and I think about my spiritual mom, Doc Doc C, right, and the amount of strength that she has to have. She is carrying the burden of not only everyone <laughs> you know uh in her immediate family but just just the burden of us all um you know it, it is it is so fulfilling yeah. to see how what she pours into the mothers and the women yeah. in this house and just all around period how she still has strength left for herself yeah. 
and 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 like the 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 amazing thing about it is if there is no strength you can't tell (laughs) she's strong right and i've never ever heard my wife in addition to her own mother i've never heard her extol another mother the way she does doxy you know and sometimes i'm like doc Doc A pretty dope too, <laughs> you know. What I mean? we, but but no, seriously, it was the, the, her ability to to transfer that amount of strength yep. to other mothers, to other women is is absolutely amazing to me. Yeah, let's let's talk about that for a moment. And this is my wife. I don't want to just, but I want to talk about how she and I because I see it from behind the closed doors, right? And she's not only a mother at home to my children, but she's also a mother of the house like you stated. And but she's always praying and warring for the women all the time. And it's just something that her gifting is to love on the women to take care of the home, right? Because you have so many women that care about the professional world. But she's just like, you can't take care of the professional world if you're not taking care of your house. And so her heart is always to strengthen the women of the house. And even to a point to where she strengthens some of the men, just like, because sometimes I can be kind of passive, like, you're going to be okay. She'd be like, no, come on, let me talk to you. It's going. I see men come out with tears, like, what you tell them? I've been talking to him for a long time. He ain't cried at all. He crying. You come out in the corner. But it's just, again, it's just like, that mother sometimes you know even even I think about my own biological father right he would never whoop me but my mom boy she'd tear into my dad be like hey just go in the room just make some noise he'd give me like two licks holla ah all right, get out of here. You good? But my mom, oh no, she gonna hit you with a belt with you. You know, she 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 gonna hit you in the face. So I think Doctor C has that she carries the same thing. So let's talk about this. I'm, a, I'm a, we're about to end this segment. Okay, let's let's wrap up with this. How has Doctor C been to you all in his house? Oh, wow. Just talk about it. Wow. I uh, ooh we. Like, you know, for for me. Um, you know, being that my family and I recently moved to the Texas area not too long ago, um, it was it was everything for us to find another another family to find uh, a church home that accepted us. You know, without even knowing us, accepted us. But again, the the, the comfort, the comfort, and the and the consistency of that comfort. It, it hasn't gone away and I don't expect it to <laughs> right and I'm not just saying this because I'm here I'm saying it because again it's, it's the truth when we met Doc C and, and you but when we met Doc C my wife my, my wife can, can pinpoint who she, who she gonna rock with and who she's not <laughs> real quick like she can pick it up like that she might get away from him real quick <laughs> and immediately immediately she resonated with doxy immediately and that was so it it created so much peace for me so much peace for me and it's not a knock against any any other mother that's been a part of her life but coming into a new environment where we didn't know anyone and for her to be embraced the way that she was by you and doxy it was everything for us it was everything and not only that but it has transferred to our children as well and that in itself makes it all worth it and that's just that's just the nurturing like you were talking about and love of a mother that lays that foundation of a home that says hey you you may have a a, a booger in your nose but come you know come on give me a hug <laughs> you know what i'm saying and she'll tell you about it later but the thing was it's not a it's, you know she she never pushes us away never pushes us away she's always are you okay is everything okay right she's even on have you checked on my how you checked on there i'm like babe i'm working i can't check on everybody <laughs> but no, you need to call them don't text and call them. i'm like okay let me call them and see what's up very good mike i love that you want to go next or destin uh, for me it's just it's everything like um the type of person i am the person i've grown up to be um i and i can say this from the both of you and i I got to get both sides where I know what I want when I ask the question. So if I'm going to ask the question, and it comes sometimes that mom be like, you want to ask me? I'm like, ah, I need a straightforward. I don't need no loving. I just need rocks and bricks. <laughs> so let me just go to dad right there. Once I get my bones broke, I'll be like, all right, now you can tell me your part. So it's just, 
And then that too is understanding what I wanted in a wife and what I wanted in a woman. Because I know coming from my background, I have to have somebody that's strong and know they self worth and ready to rock and roll. So from for her and a lot of people would ask me, is it weird, you know, having other people call her mom? And in a sense, it, it was weird the first time. The very, the very first time I heard it, when it was like, are you okay, mom? I'm like, who are you, who are you, who are you calling mom? This is, but after, after just sitting back and watching, you know, people grow, it's like, I, I can't be selfish because yep. the type of value she has, it's too much for just our house. Mm, that's good, man. It overflows our house to a yep. point where we've been grown so much she has to use it for something else. That's good. So now understanding that, it's like I do see the women that surround her because she she uplifts people, whether it's, it's our cousins or just people in general. Like you can think a person is perfectly fine, but as soon as my mom say, "Hey, how you doing?" and she just touch him, you just see cries coming down. I'm like, woman, why you make everybody I'm, cry? I'm just like, what does she do? <laughs> like, this is and there's and there's this the last time we were here, and it was one it was a Sunday where we haven't seen somebody for so long, and they came that one time, and all she did was say, "Come here," and as soon as you come here, you can just see everything that he's been lifting as soon as she hugged him it was lifted off yeah immediately <laughs> me seeing that made me realize the self-worth she has is so big that she to a point where you know when you meet a president and you got the first lady people don't understand that the president is important but that first lady is most important as well yep. she has the same strength as the president maybe even more because once that president is crushing, she's there to pick him back up to help him make those right decisions. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, she's. That's it's strong. Not even I love words. It. Very good. So good. D. Uh, who? She beat you up good too. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I think our relationship is a little different from other people's too, but she made me realize what my capacity is. So she realized, she made me realize what I can do, what I'm meant to do, and what I need to work on. She never really told me I can't do anything. Mm -hmm. she, she's only, I have to schedule it to do something. That's good. And like he was saying, like, one word. So like if I know, if I know I'm hurting a little bit, I can't go to her first. I'm going to go to him. Because <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time I was sitting on the couch and she said something. And he's sitting right here. And I'm like this. I'm like, no, no, no. And I just like one tear just and then just said some another thing. And I was just like, oh man. She real she made me realize I was hurt before I was even he said, hurt. My eyes just sweating. <laughs> my eyes were sweating. My eyes just sweating. <laughs> like she made me realize I was hurt before I knew I was hurt. So she has she has a real, real habit of pulling stuff out of me that really like I think it's like a magic trick, like one of the rabbits just pop up. <laughs> like she pulls so, she pulls so much. She, she's another person who taught me how to lead, not, and well, lead in worship. And for me, even though you said it to me the first time, she told me that most of my blessings are going to come from my worship, mm -hmm. and I can't, and my worship has to be different than everybody else's. I actually really have to spend time to actually soak in worship. That's so good. Very good, very good. So we gotta end, so this segment is good. Did y'all enjoy this? this I hope y'all enjoyed this at home. I hope you enjoyed this at home. So I gotta end on this right here. So this is written by the wisest man. This is the scripture that, that you stole from us, right? <laughs> it says this, Proverbs 18, 12 through 24. We're about to end, check this out. I want y'all to listen to this. And I was, when I first read this, I was like, I was like, why did he throw this in there all of a sudden? This is written by Solomon, which is known as one of the wisest men in the Bible, one of the most wealthiest men in the Bible. This was David's son. Verse 12 says, before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty, and before honor is humility. Verse 13, he who answers a matter before he hears, it is folly and shame to him. The spirit of man will sustain him in sickness, but who can bear a broken spirit? The heart of the prudent acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. A man's gifts make room for him and brings him before great men. 
Verse 17, the first one to plead his, his cause seems right until his neighbor comes and examines him. Casting lots causes contention to cease and keeps the mighty apart. A brother offended is harder to win than a strong city, and contentions are like the bars of a castle. Listen to me. Verse 20. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lip, he shall be fulfilled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat it. Then he jumps this in. Verse 22. I'm like, where did this come from? He who finds a wife. <laughs> finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Then he go back to beat you up again. The poor man uses entreaties. So I'm just like, all these things he mentioned first. Remember I talked about in Bible study, understanding the, the pretext, the contents. You go before and after really understand the whole story. So Solomon was giving wisdom to men or to individuals, but in the end he said, he who finds a wife. So could it be possible that we need a wife to help us with all of those lists of things to align us? You see what I'm saying? So I'm just like, I'm re I'm read this over and over again, but all of a sudden, Solomon, why do you just pop that in there? He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from love. What did that have to do with the scripture? To me, as we're ending, that is the important part of us having women because they allow us to be aligned in these things. The mothers allow the other women and the daughters and the sons to be aligned. Our wives help us align these things, to not be prideful, to not be haughty, to not, to not hold grudges, to live in forgiveness, to have great character, really what it's talking about. So our wives, our mother embraces us to do that. And so as we are remembering this Mother Day, I want to say happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers out there. We love you. We wanted to welcome you to the cave and give you our perspective in reference to a woman's worth. And we want to say thank you. Enjoy your family. Women, we want to make sure that we can embrace you today. All the future mothers, we love you. And we thank you for tuning in with us today now, church. We're so thankful for you all. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your moms. Have a fantastic day. And we want to make sure that we love you all. Any closing words? I give you 20 seconds. Any closing words? I love you, mom. Love you, mom.